This is to show you the extent of the pharynx. In fact, the pharynx extends from the base of the skull. Uh, this is a lateral view of the neck showing part of the skull. You can see here the mandible, for example. This is the occipital bone. And this is the first cervical vertebra, the atlas vertebra. You can see that the, this is the uh, soft palate, the shadow of the soft palate, and the radiolucent, actually, the radiolucent area above it is the nose, and below it is the mouth. And so this would be the nasopharynx at the level of C1, and then the oropharynx, which is located at the level of C2 and 3, and then the laryngopharynx, which will be located at the levels of C4, 5, and 6 cervical vertebrae. At the level of C6, you will find that the pharynx continues as the esophagus, and also at the level of C6, look at this a slightly calcified shadow of the cricoid cartilage. This will be the cricoid cartilage. It is located at C6. So C6 marks the beginning, in other words, of the trachea and the esophagus. Also, you can see here the hyoid bone, which is almost at the level of C3 vertebra. This is the hyoid bone anteriorly. Remember, the hyoid bone does not articulate with any other bone. It's only connected by ligaments or muscles, but there is no joint connecting it. Now, behind the pharynx, there is a, a soft tissue space. Or it's a potential space, in fact, it's not a, because it's filled with connective tissue, loose connective tissue, lymphatics. And so this area here is called the retropharyngeal space. So this is the retropharyngeal space. The retropharyngeal space, because it contains soft tissues, so it's a potential space that can expand when there is infection. And this infection could be an upper respiratory tract infection uh, that can spread to that region because it is closely related to it. Or it, sometimes the infection can spread from the teeth as well. And, and this will cause what we call a retropharyngeal abscess. And this retropharyngeal abscess is dangerous, as you might expect, because it's going to compress on the, uh, this is the respiratory passage, as well as the esophagus, and will cause difficulty in swallowing, it will cause difficulty in respiration. And the most dangerous part of that is that this retropharyngeal space continues downwards, okay? And so it continues down into the mediastinum, and that's why this might, the infection might spread into the mediastinum because of that. If you look at the, uh, this slide here, you will find that the retropharyngeal space here is located between the fascia. Look, look at the cross section to start with. The cross section will show you that there is the prevertebral fascia uh, that surrounds the prevertebral muscles and the, and the vert vertebral block of the neck. And then uh, there is another fascia that covers the pharynx here. So there is prevertebral fascia and the fascia that covers the pharynx. Uh, it's called the buccopharyngeal fascia. Between them is the retropharyngeal space. And uh, sometimes and the, this prevertebral fascia splits into another layer, which is called the alar fascia here. Alar fascia. Okay. And so it depends whether the pus is, con is located in the retropharyngeal space. In that case, it will descend down to the lower part of the neck, upper part of the mediastinum. But if it is located behind the alar fascia, it's the dangerous space. And this will cause the pus will to descend down directly down to the superior and then to the inferior mediastinum. It can reach up to the level of the diaphragm. And here you can see the roots of infection. Look at this, uh, the roots of infection uh, of an infected molar tooth. So one of the roots of spread of infection is that it will go to number five, which is the, the parapharyngeal or the retropharyngeal space. But this is not the only source of infection. It could be from an upper respiratory tract infection. And it is here in the dissection, you can see here, there's a, it looks like a, as if it is separated. Can you see that? This is actually, this is the retropharyngeal space. 
But in life, it is not a space like this. But it is easily detached in this dissection because there is soft tissue. So it it is the retropharyngeal space. Again, I repeat, it's a potential space which has soft tissue. That's why pus can easily be collected and it gets very becomes very large. It's not closed. It's a it's a potential space. Like you have the two fasci, they are close to each other, very close to each other, not closed. So whenever there is like a, a fluid or pus that's coming in between them, like this, especially it will dilate anteriorly. The pharynx, which will be located here, uh, will be pushed anteriorly. But it is not closed. No, there is a space. It's a potential space.